And now, it's time for the Yacht Club Show. Needed now more than ever. With Killer, Rev D, and Dr. Jim. Warning. Today's podcast contains audio of three grown men drinking beer. Listener discretion is advised. Wow, I don't know. Maybe it's my new hearing aids. It, it almost sounds like waves lapping up against the shore here. Are you guys <laughs> hearing that? Or am I just picking up some You've been into the drinks. You've been uh, drinking wind. before... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the Yacht Club Show. This is Mike... Listen Join. to this nonsense out here now. Oh, yeah. Let's well, see. the guy's happy he's getting a driveway, though. Yeah, he's getting a driveway. Well, now we got construction going on. Well, it's, we yeah. It's waves lapping up against the shore. <laughs> we got construction. We've got it all here. We've got life. Life yeah. is going Life is happening. Us. That's right. It's what happens when you're busy making other plans. That's right. So I'm joined by Rev D and the good Dr. Jim. How you doing, Rev D? I'm doing excellent. If I was any better, I'd be a Modella salesman. Modella? Modella. Why? What, what, yeah, what's going on about, with Modella? Uh, you heard about Modella? No. Number Modella. one. I know it's oh, a... Oh, Jimmy popped I know it's there. a Dr. Mexican Jimmy beer, yeah, and I, here, and I like it, but that's the extent of my well, knowledge. The number one selling beer... Wait today. a minute. What happened, to, uh, what happened to Bud Light? Wait a minute. Uh, They're the number one selling beer yeah, in America. Yeah, yeah. A Mexican beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah what selling. happened to Bud Light? Uh, they fell off the map. They're still having, uh, still having Closer. issues right now. Here's one. Wow, we, uh, that's still uh, still an issue. Yeah, still biting them. Yeah, it is. It is. That, that's gonna be a tough one to come back from. Like, cheers, boys. Yeah, cheers, Reb D. Yeah, I, how do you come back from that? I first of all, what are you coming back from? <laughs> I, I've never really understood the issue. They're trying yeah, to expand I, their uh, their I, base a little bit, but it, it backfired, and now the uh, protest has taken on a life of its own. It's unbelievable, and, um, but probably overreaction by people. The, you, who cares? It is an overreaction. Well, yeah, oh yeah. I, I really thought it would die down after. A oh, week. I did it too. Just, I didn't think it'd be that big a deal, but uh, it's I still, actually ordered a Bud Light last week. Did you? you? Know? Yeah, I said, why not? I, I mean, I used if Here's I want Sean, something my light. Gosh. By gosh, you'll And show. refreshing. <laughs> Not necessarily thinking beer, per se, but if I want a light, refreshing drink, I will grab a Bud Light. Oh, I thought you were going to say you had a spritzer or something. No. There, a, wine, <laughs> a little nice wine While spritzer. While you're watching uh, the Hallmark <laughs> I'm not that sophisticated. I'm a... Christmas Beer and a hot dog guy. Well, Christmas in July on Hallmark. <laughs> Killer's looking forward to. I didn't order a Bud Light last week, but you then again, not. I did not. But then again, I never order a Bud Light. <laughs> Except for when we uh, played softball. What was then that? Like, like pitcher like, after pitcher. Well, like I don't think, uh, did we get, I thought we got Labatt's and Bud Light. Well, or Jim, we did got we whatever was on special. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget we were in uh, the ground round at the time we were hitting the ground round they had a they had a pretty nice bar in the back of the restaurant and uh we've been going there for weeks <laughs> and uh the i called the manager over <laughs> and i said you know we've been pretty good customers what do you think about maybe uh springing for a, a free pitcher for us <laughs> he looked like i'd shot him remember yeah, i remember that, that. Yeah. yeah i remember that he looked like how dare you yeah how could you do that well you know what i, I was thinking they were probably corporate owned i'm, yeah. I'm guessing yep. and he'd he, probably get fired yeah he probably had a, a strict <laughs> limit it wasn't like uh, some of the other dives we went to you know he was accountable for every Come barrel on. that came out real bars I, it, I remember his answer real bars we went real to bars. I, I don't think we got any too many buybacks at uh, the yacht club either come to think of it we, oh, at the Yacht Club? The yacht I think cup. we did. We, I we, think we did. Occasionally we would occasionally get, we yeah, get a we would. or something. Man. But I remember his answer, and we'd been there like eight weeks in a row. And he said, well, if you come back next week, uh, you know, I'll get you, <laughs> get you a free picture. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we can be bought. Hey, uh, I went to a concert last night. Oh. At, uh, haven't been to one in a while. It was at the Toledo Zoo. Okay. Uh, so it's uh it's what are those called clamshell stages or yeah y- y- like the Hollywood Bowl you yeah right. yeah right. band shell or clamshells it's a really cool venue there's no 
overhead. There's no okay. cover. So just, it's just outdoors, the band. yeah. So rain or shine, they have concerts. Well, it was a beautiful night. Saw the band Chicago, and I'd never seen them before. Oh, they man. were fantastic. Were they? I saw them 40 years ago. 40 Pine, years ago. Well, no, ago. it was probably more 50. Oh, yeah. Pine, Pine Knob, yeah. No, I believe Long 50 years yeah, ago, 50, absolutely. Yeah. Incredible. The three original members. Still, still. really? Yeah. Jim Panko, the uh, trombone player, and Robert Lamb, the uh, keyboard player and vocalist. And I mentioned them, those guys first because uh, they're songwriters. You know, they still get, I'm sure, tons of royalties. And then the third is Lee uh, Lofnane, the trumpet player. He was, they, you know, because they're the three original members, they really featured all three of them very, really? very prominently. Uh, more than uh, Lofnane, the trumpet player, guy had a lot of really cool solos. But it was it was fantastic. What do you think the net worth of one of those guys would be? All the hits. I looked it up. I looked up some estimates. And oh, and man. Lamb and Panko, their <laughs> net worth is estimated about the same. What what would you guess? Twenty million. Wow, right on the nose. Really? Yeah. I thought it'd be a little higher. Than I that. thought it'd be higher too, just because uh, when you attend this concert, you just you just marvel hit after hit after hit. Yeah. But I suppose uh, maybe the Beatles are covered more, you know. Maybe they get royalties. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. they probably wrote more, a little bit more enduring music. But, boy, these uh, this music was fantastic. It's talk about a trip down memory lane. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. these guys, they're in their 70s now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, they can't be for the money, right? If you have a net worth of $20 million, you're probably not doing it for the money. And they look like they're having a ball up there. Uh, well, Panko, well, the uh, trombone player, is very animated, and he and he talks a lot. He, I, I love one thing he said. We sure love coming to these towns and talking to people. And some one person, one woman, came up to me and said, "You know, we grew up with your music." And he said, <laughs> "So did I," because <laughs> they were just youngsters when they started. You sure. know, yeah, sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just nice to see these guys still having fun up there. And you know, you like you said, they're in their seventies. I don't know if they're late, late 70s. I'm not sure. Oh, if you I'm com- sure. I'm, I'm, probably. I guess, yeah. And they're, so they played Toledo last night. They're playing in Rochester, New York tonight. They play five five nights a week. Really? Yeah. Wow. Get on the bus. And, and these uh, are two and a half hour concerts, you know. It I, was that long, eh? Well, they had an intermission, 20 yeah. minute intermission. But yeah, it was uh, it was probably close to two and a half hours that they played. How many people? That holds about 4,500 people, okay. I think. And it looked packed it looks sold out yeah, i'm yeah. sure i'm sure and what a, toledo audiences this is in toledo ohio are really receptive to these bands i can remember that from when i was a kid growing up these <laughs> have concerts at the toledo sports arena it was just such a dive but uh they really appreciated these bands coming into town they showed their appreciation it was really a really cool night yeah, so it anyway is, it, fun. it is good to see some of the old uh it is the old bands come by again yeah. you know yeah. and uh yeah you know we get these new ones like nestor you know yeah gotta have, have a nestor. gotta have a well old, you can't get a ticket <laughs> i mean that's the, that's the issue i wish we had an in <laughs> any, hey, any update on nestor i haven't uh haven't really spoken to ben he was doing some uh writing for for the band last time i talked to him good i think they got a get together at the end of the summer talk about the album but, cool well, well and they got a i think they have a concert going this summer to- with uh, toledo zoo <laughs> <laughs> yeah see if you can get them to come to the toledo zoo a couple of big name motley crew and, yeah and, and somebody else it's uh so they're you know they're doing fine he's good. doing fine with it so good they're still be, at it. uh be good to see what comes of it they're still collaborating yeah, yeah nice to see if he can uh get something out of all of this but he's having a good time anyway Coming along, I guess. So I'm assuming Tobias hasn't called you to thank you for all the the, uh, getting the. No, I did. What did he say? He was he was working on lyrics. I don't know if it was for a song. I think it was for a song. And Ben tells me this name that they were going on, and he said it was "Addicted to Love." I said, "Uh, "You might want to look into that one." Robert Palmer. I was going to say, I think uh, there was some, some, uh, you know. Some British I know artist some, already did that. Yes, you might you might get away with that if the guy isn't real uh, famous. But if my understanding is, uh, you know, it's, it was Robert Palmer. He says, "Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah." I kind of kind of heard of that, but 
He says, okay, we'll have to do some work See, on that. See, they need we're, one of us old codgers on the, they can the, need, on that's the writing right. team so that's we can right. protect them against these infringements. Yeah, we need to run the lyrics by us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah So absolutely. we can keep the lawyers away. <laughs> Our service. So, so, so uh, Tobias hasn't noticed any big increase in sales since our podcast. Is what, if what he has, has, he hasn't mentioned it to Ben. <laughs> or if he's mentioned it to Ben, it wasn't... It wasn't past that. It hasn't <laughs> really gone, changed his life in any way at this point. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It takes time, time to yeah, build. A lag. There's the a lag. lag. There's a lag, There's a lag yeah, between it, becoming it. the official band of the Yacht Club and that's right. astronomical that's success. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tee up this show here. We were pretty anxious to get back in the studio uh, after our last podcast because Jim brought up a topic about this upcoming election and, and how the Democrats are trying to affect things a little bit, at, at least at the uh, primary stage. And uh, I think there's probably a lot of hokum going on between both parties. But uh, this is where I think the Yacht Club shines is when we start talking about our prognostication of the uh, Oh, yeah, we of, just, yeah. We just elections. nailed it. We just fact, nailed it. So we're going to, you know, that'll be a treat. That's uh, going to be the meat of the show. But first, Rev D. Yes, yeah, sir. Do you happen to have a bonehead? You know, Killer, I do. I was, uh, you mentioned it, and I was thinking about this. Um, I'm going to nominate Prince Harry and Meghan uh, Markle. Aren't you tired of these two? Yeah, I wish they'd go away. You know, yeah, just just go away. And, and, I, and I really thought, and I admittedly don't follow that closely, but I really thought that they got out of England to uh, so they could have kind of a normal life and <laughs> quiet and be away from the the royalty. And that kind of was the storyline. Well, wasn't I, th- it? I think that yeah. I, I, that's what I kind of recall. And they just made sure they were on the news every night, every, telling yeah, you that, Doctor Jim. Every news cycle, <laughs> there is something. We're about just these plain two. folks. Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just, uh, I, I just had enough. They, they, they grate on me at, uh, at this point. Well, and then they hit the, they hit the night show rounds. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's a good one, Dave. I don't know. I just wish they'd go away. Just, y- just disappear y- into just, the sunset. Yeah, if you raise their kids and raise your kids, have, that have quiet. a quiet life yeah. in California, wherever you're at, and uh, just just go so away. even get Move by on. on a royal allowance or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, are they cut off. I don't know. Oh. I don't even know what cut off means for those people. Yeah, just just go away. <laughs> just go away. All right. All right, before we get into politics, uh, hey, Dave, man, I like this Modelo. I see how it's uh, the number one seller. What do you guys think? You do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. It's, uh, where's the, where does the water come for this? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, know? where's this brood? Imported. They say don't drink the water, so where does it come from? Brewed and bottled by Cerveceria Modelo, Nava, Nava Mexico. Mexico. Nava. Well, I hear the water's great in Nava. I oh. hear it's great. No, from, from the know. mountains, from, from the, yeah, it's like mountain spring water. And it's like glaciers. Uh, it's molding. like Coors, the Coors, yeah. the, the Coors of of Mexico. That's right, mountain spring water. There yeah. you go. Yeah. What do you think? I think uh, I think very strongly both ways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a light beer, and I know it's not light, but it's. I like it. Do you? I really do. I like it better than Corona. Do you? Yeah. What, what did you say when we opened up? What did you? Uh, you're you're a big Bud Light fan too, right? So you, maybe you like this the has light. more flavor than Bud Light. Bud Light's flavorless. It's just refreshing like spritzer, and has a little bit of alcohol type in it. Stuff. Huh? You like the spritzer type stuff? No, 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 no. I this is uh, this is what's it say? Golden full flavored Pilsner. Full flavored. I agree. Well, you must have got my flavor. <laughs> I just, <laughs> they, they skipped it in this bottle. They skipped that bottle. I get you know when you get used to an IPA, I guess that's uh, anything. That's else. a good point. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not this as is the uh, anti-IPA. So anyway, on to onward and have to see what Nestor politics. drinks during your break. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get Modelo to sponsor Nestor? Nestor, and then Nestor, using those profits, will sponsor us. Sponsor us. Yeah, I, I see. I see a an Cycle. ecosystem. Yeah, building. yeah, yeah, an eco, yeah, business ecosystem. Yeah, the one hand washes the other. That's right. I like right. that. Yeah, I like that. Cross marketing. Yeah. All right, let's uh, 
after, after Let's we told, promote that idea. Said how much Put we a did bug in Nestor's I changed much, my mind. It's great stuff. I like <laughs> yeah, it. I was going to say, after how much we said we did it's like Modelo, now it's, whoa, yeah. It's, it's growing, growing on me. Man. Man. Oh, there's some great <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I do have to tell you, I probably wouldn't turn on the second one. You wouldn't turn down no. the second one? No. No, see? <laughs> see, I'm, That's, Dr. Jim's starting to come, come around. I have <laughs> maybe a, a, a hair of taste, and, but not to compromise that far. <laughs> Not afraid to compromise it a little. Well, you, it's a taste that grows on you. That's right. So you have to let it grow. You have to let it ferment. That's gotta, right. You got to get into the flavor profiles. Yes. You know, I'm in a pueblo on a hot summer day under a tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to pause this because this segment is brought to you by Modelo. Okay. <laughs> Jim, uh, last time you mentioned your dismay, or maybe it's just an observation, that the Democrats seem to be trying to, what's the word, sabotage the, the entire idea of a primary. <laughs> yeah. I guess what struck me was we know from polls that the voters don't want either Trump or Biden. Very true. And Biden's approval number is well below 50%. So not even half of the of his own party want him to run or, or think he's doing a good job. And then I think it's even more than that, don't want him to run. Right. So I'm thinking that the Democrats are always talking about the Republicans trying to dis, disenfranchise the voters, taking the vote away from people and just overall not giving people an op- options. And I, it seems to me that the Democrats are they're doing worse than that. They're consciously not allowing the members of their own party to choose their presidential candidate. They have decided who the candidate is going to be, and they have decided it's going to be Joe Biden. And, you know, on the other hand, you look at the Republicans. I mean, they look like a clown car in a circus with the number of candidates they have between Trump and then the Trumpeteers that that get out with him. They look like it's a free-for-all for anybody who wants to be the nominee for the Republicans. So it just doesn't square with me what they're doing. So I'm just th- I'm thinking that this is this is a strange, strange set of affairs. Now, the only guy giving them trouble, I mean, Robert, Bobby Kennedy Jr. is giving him trouble. He's got 20 percent of the vote. And this guy is a loose cannon. I mean, he's saying things that at least the way he's portrayed in the press, he's he's off the rails. Yet he's got 20% of the vote in the Democrat Party. So, I, I mean, this is sort of a poor display of democracy on the part of the Democrats. So I'll see. We'll see where this goes. I think Kennedy's getting, um, like you said, he's, how he's portrayed in the press. Right. Okay, if you really listen um, to him, I think he makes some valid points. Yes. Is Okay. And that, I agree it just, with you. He, he makes you think. Right. Okay, about things. And, yep. But you're right. The, um, you, you think he was an anti-vaxxer and, uh, you know. That's what I've heard. That, that, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Back. That was and a he, big rap. Yeah, yeah, and if you listen to when he explains things, it's, it's not that. It's not he, that crazy. It's not that crazy. Yeah. Just, you know, they haven't been studied enough, basically, sure. is the. Uh, and you, you could make that. And I don't know. That's that a that's, strong it, argument. It, I don't know if it's right or wrong. I know. But, okay. But I, I think Jim's right that uh, the, the press has made him out to be a, uh, a whack job. So the left-leaning media, you think, wants Biden. Is that right? Yes. So so what does that tell you, Jim? Is it, does that say then that we don't want anybody but Biden to run because we think any Republican could beat any other Democrat we'd put up? Well, it's... Uh, Biden's our, own, our best hope to uh, keep the president. Another thing that really strikes me as odd is that Let's even leaving Bobby Kennedy out, because I think in a lot of ways he's he's essentially a protest vote. I don't think people, have, you know, say they would consider him or he's got 20 percent because all of those people agree with his stance on vaccines. It's basically a protest against he'd be, uh, Biden. He'd, he'd be better than Biden. They think they think they're just send, sending a message to the Democrats as to what they think of their their options right now. 
But, you know, one of the things I'm a little bit sympathetic for the Democrat Democrat Party in the sense that they don't really have many potential candidates. I'm trying to think who would be a a, a strong candidate. Biden chose not to run. I don't know that I can think of the Democrats. So he I don't know. Newsom. Well, let's Newsom would be I don't agree with Newsom, I think. Uh, I'd be uh, concerned about his his policies, but he should be in the conversation. The conversation. Yeah. What I like about him, I caught that part of his recent interview, is he seems to take accountability. Yeah. You know, they say the state of California is a mess. He goes, yeah, I know. I, I admit that we've had we've had some failed policies, but here's here's why we did what we did. You know, it maybe it didn't work, but I it was kind of refreshing for me to hear somebody like him talk. Well, well, that's to, it. To that's it. Accountability. It, He's got things he thinks wants to be done, but he looks like he understands the process of governing. On the other hand, he does get resistance. The ultra liberals in California think he's not liberal enough. Mm. So they're tough on him. But, you know, when I think back of the in past elections and who the candidates were, I mean, I can go back. I can go back a bunch of years. If you looked at, uh, you know, just in my lifetime, say, and I don't actually remember this election, but it did occur while I was alive. Eisenhower against Adelaide Stevenson. I mean, these were two legitimate heavyweight yeah. competitors. When, when's, when's the last time we, we people that, that we could rally behind? That, that, no, well, that's I, a good point that Trump you can be, side, okay. I, what you, no matter what side you're on. Yeah, my guy didn't win, but okay. Yeah, uh, this I, the other guy is, is, this guy is, I can live yeah, with. I yeah. disagree with his ideas, right. but he is a legitimate right. uh, leader. Yeah. He's yeah. got capability. He's got, when we talked about what are the attributes you're looking for? You want somebody who's capable, a capable leader, has got integrity, and can communicate. Eisenhower could do that. People thought he was pretty stodgy, but when you see him give speeches, he's very, very able to do that. Then you move on to Kennedy versus Nixon. So Kennedy was, you know, those, again, these were people that were, they yeah, were meant yeah. for the big stage. Sure. And you go from that LBJ against Goldwater. Both of them were Washington heavyweights. Now, obviously, Goldwater got crushed, but he was still a, a legitimate flag right. carrier f- for a significant percentage of the voters. Moving on, you go to uh, then Nixon wins again against McGovern and all this stuff. And then you get to these two. I'm looking at Monty Python. Awful. Awful Monty Python it, it set is, up it, an election. Even Probably how, how many pe- how many people listening to us remember Monty Python? Monty Python. <laughs> About when Bob Dole ran, I mean he he probably would have been a decent uh, president. Was that yeah against, uh, yeah Clinton? Yeah. Right? That was what against was Clinton, it? right? Yeah. Now so Clinton we, we had choice back then. Yeah. yeah, and Clinton beat George Herbert Walker yeah. Bush, who was who had no answer for the economy. He well, he was a great. I think he was a great leader. He was. An, but it was kind integrity. Of stupid back then. It well, was, it was yeah. it wasn't so much the economy. It was it was Clinton's communication skills versus uh, Bush's lack of them. Yeah, Clinton and, is charismatic. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he beat Bo- Dole probably right. pretty well, handily. Yeah. Yeah. But Dole would have been a, a, probably a decent. He would have been all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Clinton, I look back on Clinton and I I did not vote for him and talk about uh, integrity. There was you can't put him in. Him and integrity in the same sentence, except with a negative. (laughs) But, man, this guy, looking back on him, that was one capable president. Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. It's his own worst enemy. Well, so you get, and you go on and on and on. Even you get to Obama, Obama versus McCain. Now, Obama, I thought, was pretty much a lightweight, but Obama came along at the right time for him. He got the the country country was... Bust, the bit for they were busting a gut to yeah. prove that they were not racist, right. and he gave them the opportunity. Yep. Could be. Yeah, it's, so, it's going to be interesting. I, I still don't think Biden will, will run. Uh, I, I don't and, know. You know, where I, that came maybe from. I, you know. I've read that. Well, that's just Joe. Well, Joe. Joe being, being Joe. Joe. Yeah, but well, what another, did it mean? I mean, what was well, a joke? I just, I, someone let me. Uh, you know, in on the well, joke. okay. Let, let's let me play devil's advocate here. That he was just okay. He was just having fun and. Um, Lighthearted, and they, God <laughs> save the queen, guys. You know the well, problem. Problem with him is he can't get away with just being lighthearted because everything he says like that gets interpreted negatively. That's that's a fair point. You that's, know he's got to yeah. watch his mouth. He's got to learn true. to watch his mouth, which he doesn't seem able to do. He said something about she the other day. Maybe it was yesterday about 
she did not know the balloon that came over the United right. States. Yeah. So how is she going to react to that? You're telling me I don't know what's going on in yeah, my country yeah. where and I that's am. Exact, like, you're right, Jim. That's exactly that's, how he would. Exactly. Better yeah, left yeah. unsaid. The yes. Chinese, yes. they are that very sensitive that. to that type of criticism that he is not in charge of everything that goes on around him. They may not be, but they don't want people saying it. And we just just spent the weekend with this charm offensive in, in China with Blinken. Lincoln barely gets off the plane when Biden comes along and <laughs> cuts his legs out from under him. So, yeah. I mean, there's that sort of thing. And there is the continuing disappearing act that is Kamala. Yeah, you I haven't mean, heard from her you don't, recently. She's going to be been along. There's a few word salad events. Has there? Yeah. I, no, I haven't, okay. yeah. So if I'm looking at Joe and my vice president is uh, Gavin Newsom. I'm saying I don't like it, but I got, you know, here's a guy who ran the fourth largest state with the fourth largest economy in the world. Yeah. He's kind of, I may not like what he's going to do, but I think, you know, yeah. he's, he's and got he the experience. Pretty sharp. He yeah. He's got the experience to do that. Yeah. I'm feeling, I'm a little, you know, I, maybe I don't want to vote for Biden, but I'm okay with him coming in for a second term. But when, you know, you're thinking of an empty suit coming in after, if anything happens to Biden. Which, let's face it, how old will he be? And we've watched him falter, mm. you know, mentally, physically, in his term. We, it's visible. You can see it. Compared to that first speech where, hey, you got to give me a chance, and he ran up to the microphone. And now it's like he gets done talking. People have to, Joe, over here. Here's the exit. He does he doesn't know where he's at half the time, it seems. Well, even it's if, even if sad. it's not even that, even that is, and that's that's important, uh, whether or not it's, you know, everybody jumps on the opportunity to, to tag him with that, and he sort of helps him out along the way with his basic fumbling. Is he the, you know, is he as smart as Newsom? Is he as smart as, you know? I don't think he is, but that's. But, uh, you know, is he, he was never, he was never an executive. He never ran anything. And now he's, you know. He was always a BSer. I mean, he, gosh, you know, he just was so full of crap his entire career from what I well, gather. Well, he's a, a BSer from a small state. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, he, he was in the right place at the right time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody could have beat uh, Well, how many times Trump? did he lose the nomination? Right. Yeah. Right. So it's it gives Democrats or, you know, kind of scratching their heads for the right reasons. Now, you know, it's it's interesting when I think about it. They talk about the election. Any Democrat can beat Trump except for Biden. <laughs> and any Republican can beat Biden except for Trump. <laughs> so I find it crazy that we're looking at these two guys. So, all right, I agree with you. But what do you think the chances are that we really have Biden versus Trump? Oh, I don't. 60 percent probably. Do you really 60%. think it's that high? Yeah. Yep. I don't think it's that high. I just see Biden slowly deteriorating. But who's going to who's going to take him on? Kennedy, maybe Newsom. Is Newsom has Newsom expressed any interest? You well, know, they won't because they he may express some interest, but they won't because they want to have a future in the party. They right, want they, they want to yeah. be around for the next election. Newsom is going to run after twenty twenty four. Got they, it. I don't think anybody's going to announce, but I I think personally that Biden will just say. No mas. It's right. At some, some at some point, point, he has to say that. Yeah. that People that, have got to get to the – but he can't wait too long because well, that's, that that's makes true. it problematic. That, that, that's true. That's true. So, so that's Biden. So, so, on okay. the other hand is Trump. Trump is sitting at 50 percent. Okay. Do you buy that? Nope. But he doesn't need 50 percent. I No, I, I, I agree. He, he doesn't need 50 percent. I just don't see this big groundswell of support for Trump. Not saying he doesn't have support, right. but I just can't buy fifty percent of the party. Nope, is, I can't either. But well, they haven't seen their choice. They haven't. Well, and again, that's a good point. I think we're very early yep. in this. The, the um, I think Iowa is the, still the first in f January, late f or February for the. the I'm caucus confused. The, I don't know. I don't know. But the caucus, the caucus, and everything starts in in February. Right. Right. Okay. So I, I think we have a lot of time before all this. All right. Can Trump beat Biden? Don't think so. I don't think so either, but I'm not willing to 
uh, write that off completely at the, this point. The, this is what I hang my hat on, I guess, is when Trump won, he got a lot of votes for people who did not care for Hillary, but also had this secondary sort of hope without evidence that Trump is just kidding about the way he is. And once he becomes president, he's going to be like a rational actor. (laughs) Yeah, I was kind of counting that. So everybody sort of went into this. These two thoughts were in their mind. It was like, we don't like Hillary. I need a justification not to vote for her. I'll vote for this guy, Trump. But then Trump's a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. He's a lot. He's a wacko. I think he gives a... Call him crazy, he gives a bad name to crazy. He's not crazy. He's, like, thoughtfully this way. He's and, a textbook and narcissist. Whatever. That, yeah, that's what that's what they say. But it's – he is – so you, people voted for him. The ne- second time around, those people are not going to vote for him. Yeah, he didn't true. get a majority of the vote the first time. Yeah, they don't want the chaos again. They don't You're want right. the chaos. They don't even want – they f- suddenly realized that whatever Trump was, he still is. And, right. we, and we thought he wasn't going to be the way he was. It looks like he's going to he's gonna be Trump squared the next time he comes in. He's going to be trying to nail him. He's going to be trying to kill everyone who ever opposed him. If he becomes president the second time, we may as well have the Nuremberg trials. Right. Well, and nobody's going to work with him. No. Well, who's going to go into his cabinet after no, you no, see what he's no quality people. after you see what he's done? Yeah. So he's if he's if he's dominated at just handing the election to the to the Democrats. I, Jim, that that's where okay, on, on the surface I agree with you, but I look, look deeper. You, you look at Biden, and if it's against Biden, I, said, I don't know. I think it's closer than we think. I really do. Mm. I, it's going to be. It would be tough because those are two awful candidates. Is your point? Yeah. So when you have two awful candidates, it's, you, anyone, it's a coin flip, right? It could well, be you're, everybody's going to be holding their, yeah. holding their nose. And if there, maybe, uh, if there are more Democrats than Republicans, maybe the, uh, the Democrats, uh, they, they just get it by that. And the, the independents, I think it's going to be hard for them to want the chaos of— The uh, independents are going to swing away from Trump. Right. The Democrats, obviously, gonna, they're going to stick with Biden versus Trump. And then you got Republicans. How many Republicans that are, you know, so-called centrists are anti-Trump? Okay. And we're in a uh, recession. Yeah, the numbers just aren't there, Dave. In 2024. It's okay. No, it's not No, No, it won't be okay. People vote their pocketbook. I'm still convinced of that. Uh, Depending on how deep that recession is. All right, gents. So I think that's our... Assessment of the Democratic Party at this point, where kind of the quagmire they're in. Maybe next show we'll talk a little bit more in depth about uh, the Republican candidates and how we think that could potentially shake well, out. Well, and see, you know, next time we get together, I'm sure there'll be a little bit more clarity was, with. Uh, there may be even more candidates. That's, by that's right. true. That's <laughs> another point. That's another point. That'd be good. So, gents, as always, good to talk to you. Good to see you. Hey, first day of summer, too. First it's, day it's of summer. That's right. That's oh, right. A gorgeous yeah. day. Yeah. 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 Great day. Yeah. Beautiful summer day. It is a beautiful summer day. Hopefully our listeners can hear the birds chirping in the background. Yeah. I like to sit out here and listen to the birds. Yeah. Well, it, you're a kind of a nature guy. I'm a nature, nature guy. guy. I'm just sort of I like, love it out here. This is nice. Yeah, it is. Before we sign off, I noticed a third bottle of Modelo made its way in front of Dr. Jim. So is this starting to sway your opinion a little bit about uh, this uh, fine Mexican beer? Well, I have to tell you, and you, you may wonder about the third bottle. I ordinarily wouldn't have a third no, bottle. No, that's in, what I've noticed. But in yeah. the interest of being fair and giving in a kind of a thorough analytical response to a question. It's, your, it's is, in is the it spirit a, of being fair well, and as a scientist. Yeah. As, a a scientist. scientist. as a scientist, I think I have an obligation to be thorough. Yes, you do. No, I, I have found that the Modelo does, but it does, it shares this capacity with this capability amongst many of my favorite beverages, it seems to grow on you <laughs> and finds a place within your palate. It's sort of like... After a couple. After a after couple. After one and a half or so, right? One and a half or so, it becomes more of a a more pleasant experience, shall okay, we say. A lifestyle choice? Is that, it could be a could lifestyle be, choice. Could I'm be that? Weighing that as a, an alternative. I'll bet you after normal. four... 
<laughs> you, oh, man. It must be get, a, get even better. <laughs> wow, I can't imagine that. It could be better than this. After Is four, that right? it's a lifetime commitment. <laughs> it could be better than this. So I think I think the, the Modelo folks are on to something. Okay, wow. Oh, so That's quite a change. A turnaround, we, yes, yeah, yes. Quite yes. a turnaround. I, fe- yeah. I went from a, a basically, a, you know. <laughs> Not impressed. And, and meh. Yeah. To a, you know, it's, this, is a, this is a comfortable way to pass an afternoon. <laughs> a sunny day, <laughs> a sunny day on the deck. Yeah, are you listening, Modelo? What a we, day we could for use, a day We could dream. use your sponsorship here. <laughs> Dr. Jim's on I, board. I am available. As a spokesman. <laughs> and can be bought. <laughs> can be bought. <laughs> and you remember the, who's it, Dos Equis had the world's most interesting man? Yeah. <laughs> Not you anymore. ain't seen nothing now, yet. Now it's Dr. Jim with the Modelo in front <laughs> you, of him. You want to see interesting. <laughs> you want to see interesting. I can interest your butt off. <laughs> give me, give me, <laughs> you want to see interesting, give me another Modelo. <laughs> give me a Modelo. <laughs> and let me go. No script. <laughs> another Modelo and no script. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Until next time, this is the Aqua. Music by War on Drugs as found on the Internet Archives, archive.org.